Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Riley White and I'm a third grade reading and ELA teacher. Now if you watched my last video, you already know that I'm old school when it comes to planning. I like the paper pencil planner much more than I like the digital planners that a lot of teachers are using these days. But with the exception of planners, I love technology in the classroom. And one of my favorite ways to implement technology in the classroom is through virtual field trips. If you've never tried a virtual field trip, I highly recommend them. They're super beneficial and for more than one reason. First of all, they're so engaging. Students love these. Second, I think a lot of times we as teachers forget that experiences that are kind of common for us, maybe our students haven't got to experience. I teach several students who have never been to the beach, to DC. Um, there's just a lot of different experiences that we have as educators that I think a lot of times we forget our students haven't got to experience themselves. And this allows them to visit and try out these places. They also can become more familiar with settings of stories as well as see different landmarks that may be beneficial in science or social studies. And the third reason is I do recommend doing your first um, virtual field trip with your students, like with you in the room so that you can help them if they get stuck on anything but they're super easy to leave with a sub, or I even use them for theme days. So for example, one of my favorite dress up days in the school year is Disney day. And so I made a virtual field trip for Disney World, which is the one I'm gonna share with you today. So if any of that sparked any interest, stay tuned because I'm about to show you how to use Google Slides to help make your very own virtual field trips. I wanted to start off by showing you an example of the finished product. That way you can see what we're going to be making throughout the tutorial. Here you have my intro slide, virtual field trip to Walt Disney World. And then I like to add a map. Now usually I will route this from our school to the destination so the kids can see just how far the trip really is. But for the sake of their privacy, I decided to route Disneyland to Disney World. Then you have your welcome, we made it slide. And now we have our interactive map. This is cool because each star on the map is a link to a different ride. So students can click this, go on the ride, go back to map, and go on as many as they want. Students can then arrow over to begin the academic portion of the virtual field trip. This is a great time to add real world examples of the content we're learning in class. Here is an example of one of my math pages where they're buying snacks inside the park. Once they complete that, they'll arrow on over to their reading page where they'll click the link provided. It'll take them to a little kid-friendly article on Walt Disney. And all I'm asking them to do on this one is to record three facts that they learned about him. And finally, the writing component where they pick one of the three prompts below and simply respond to it in the space provided. I like to give them a little bit of choice on this because I have found that writing is their least favorite part. And when they arrow over for the last time, they get to relax after all their hard work and watch the Happily Ever After fireworks show. You might be surprised to find out that making this is actually a lot easier than you may initially assume. I like to start by going to Google and searching a background for the title slide. I sped this up because I'm kind of indecisive, but here you can see I'm just Googling a picture of the castle and I'm going to copy that and then paste it and resize it to fit my background. You can also save the picture and upload it as the background if you prefer. Now this next part is completely optional, but I like to add it because I think it adds just a little more personalization and my students seem to like it. So I put my Bitmoji in. You don't have to do this, but for those of you who don't know, a Bitmoji is like an animated version of you and you can get it by going to the Chrome Web Store, clicking extensions on the left hand side and typing in Bitmoji. Right here, you could see where you would put add to Chrome. I already have it, so mine just says rate it, but it's up here in my extensions bar. And I'm just gonna go back to my slides and choose a Bitmoji that I like. Once you find a Bitmoji you like, simply copy and paste it in, resize and position it where you want it. One really convenient thing about Bitmojis is that they already come with a transparent background, so that's nice. Next, if you wanna add a little extra accessory like I did here, you can go to Google and find whatever it is you want. I chose to do Mickey ears on mine since it is Disney World. And then you just find the image that you want. 
and you'll see that I copy and paste it in and then I realized that even though it was supposed to have a transparent background, it actually did not. So I'm going to help you get around that if you encounter the same problem. To get rid of a background on an image, simply click the image, save it to your computer, and then go to remove.bg. You upload the photo and it will remove the background for you and then you can resave it to your computer. After you get back to your Google Slides, you can drag it, drop it, resize it, and position it wherever you want it. After that, I just like to add a title, and I just kind of play around until I find a design that I like. I also thought my students might recognize the Walt Disney World logo, so I went to Google and grabbed that as well. Once you're satisfied with the way it looks, your title slide is complete. To add additional slides, go up to the small plus sign in the top left-hand side of the page, I like to add blank ones so I can be in control of everything that's added, but you can choose the one that works best for you. This is where I choose to put in the map. Um, obviously, you can choose to put in whatever you want for slide two, but I like to start with the map myself. I'm just taking a screenshot from Google Maps and then making that the background of my slide two. And after that, I am going to add another slide to my presentation. For slide 3 I did off camera just because it's very similar to the title. I added a background of like a welcome to where we were going, I added a text box to say we made it, and then of course a bitmoji. This is also a fun slide to um, do like a YouTube video of a plane ride or a car ride or a boat ride to kind of let the students experience the traveling aspect of it. You can just be creative with this slide really. This is going to be my interactive page, so I'm just going to type out some instructions on how I want the students to navigate the page, and then I'm going to complete it by adding a map. And because I am who I am, you already know that on this page, gotta have my Bitmoji. Now, you can get a new Bitmoji if you want, but I'm personally just going to go back to my title slide and grab the exact same one. And last, I'm just going to insert a little star as like my key because every star that I put on this page will be a clickable link for my students to use. After my maps, I'm going to go ahead and add in the educational components where my students will actually respond. Here's my math slide, my reading slide, and my writing slide. And these slides all have interactive features so students can record responses. After the writing slide, as weird as it may seem, we're going to go ahead and put our ending slide. This is because after the students arrow to this particular slide, they're going to be finished. All the extra slides after that will use to link videos. So here I'm going to let my students finish with the fireworks show from Disney World. So I'm going to go to YouTube and grab a link for the show so that I can add it to the slide. And I'm also going to make a note down in the corner to let the students know that this is the last slide for them to complete. For all the remaining slides, I'm going to put attractions for the students to virtually ride. To do this, I just like to start with a black background, go to YouTube, copy the link of the video I want, and then I'm going to go to insert video and paste that link. When you search that, the video should pop up and you can insert that straight into your slide. Resize it as you need to. And then over on the right hand side, you can see the toolbar. That's really convenient because you can actually decide at what point you want to start and end the video as well as clicking that little checkbox that says autoplay when presenting. This will make it where the student doesn't have to click a button. Rather, the video will just start as soon as they get on that slide. Next, I'm just creating a little shape that looks like a pin icon that you would see on a map. I'm just going to insert the shape, rotate it a little bit, size it the way that I want it, and then underneath I'm going to add text that says back to map. I'm going to turn this into a link and link it to the slide that has the map. In my case, slide 4. To add the link, you just right click, go down to link, slides in this presentation, and then choose the slide number you want that hyperlink to go to. The nicest part is, once you have that link one time, all you have to do is put it where you want it, and then you can copy and paste it into all the other slides with all your other attractions. That'll save you some serious time. And this is an example of what it will look like once you have several pages of attraction slides. And now it's time for the most tedious part, linking the slides. I start by making a copy of the star from the key. 
Then I go to this map of the Magic Kingdom and find the attraction video that I want to link. Here you can see it's number 45 on the map, Peter Pan's Flight. So I go back to my slides and I'm just going to drag that star onto the number 45. Then you go to Insert, Link, Slides in this presentation, and scroll down to the one that has the corresponding attraction. It's slide 9 for me. Now you can see when I go to Present, I can click on that star and it will take me straight to that attraction. When I'm finished with that attraction, I can click back to map, and I'm ready to go to another. And that is it for the virtual field trip. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe because it really supports my channel. While you're there, go ahead and check out the description box for these freebies. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the tutorial. I really appreciate you taking the time out to watch this video today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box below and I would be happy to reply. Also, check out the description box for any helpful links. Again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.